want to learn how to use alcohol inks to make fun backgrounds for cards? Well, stay tuned. Hey everybody, it's Christina. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking all about how to use alcohol inks to make fun backgrounds for cards. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to go over all of the tools, the supplies, and the techniques that you can use to get started on making these fun backgrounds. What are alcohol inks, you ask? Well, they are a fast drying, highly pigmented alcohol-based ink that works on non-porous surface. They usually come in some kind of little bottle. This one's by Ranger. This is the Tim Holtz ones, and they are the most popular ones. They have a huge variety of colors. Mostly they come in the 0.5 ounce bottles, and they have little dropper style tops on them so that we can drop our ink um, where we want them onto our non-porous surface. We can also use the alcohol ink refills that you would use for your alcohol markers. So if you have refills for your Copic markers or you have a type of marker that is refillable and they sell the ink that you can refill the pen, you could also use that for creating your alcohol ink backgrounds. This particular one is by Alta New, so we are going to be playing with these two types of uh, alcohol inks by Ranger and then one by Alta New. Let's talk about the different substrates that you can use for creating your backgrounds. The most popular one is Yupo paper. Yupo paper is made of a plastic material, so it's a non-porous surface. If you use a regular cardstock that you would use for your card bases and stuff like that, it's going to absorb, the alcohol ink is going to absorb into the cardstock. Card alcohol ink with Yupo paper will sit on top of the surface so we're able to move the alcohol ink around this particular one is by Ranger and Tim Holtz this is a 5x7 white cardstock they also have it available in black and uh, translucent so again this is the Yupo paper I also picked up the 10 9 by 9 by 12 10 count this is a different weight than the Tim Holtz one Tim Holtz is an 86 pound cardstock or Yupo paper and this one is a 74 pound. It's not too much of a difference. It's slightly thinner, but it has um, that texture. If you're familiar with uh, the Shrinky Dink film, it's like that, it's plastic. However, it's much thinner than the Shrinky Dink film. So this is the white in the nine by 12. We also can buy it in the transparent or translucent. This is the translucent in it. You can kind of see through it and we'll do a sample of this as well. This one is a much thinner one. Um, I believe I saw that it was 104 weight pound weight cardstock. Another non-porous surface that you can create designs on is vellum. Vellum works great for creating backgrounds. The last one I want to talk about is acetate. I use this one by Graphics. It is a heat resistant, so I can use my heat gun on it. And it is also a great film for creating alcohol ink backgrounds. We're going to do some samples of each one of these um, later on in the video. We're going to talk about the different types of tools we need for working with the alcohol inks. So not only do you need your alcohol inks, but you need a couple of different tools. For moving our alcohol inks around on our non-porous surface so we can create that fun background design, we're going to need something like an alcohol blending solution or isopropyl alcohol. It is recommended to use 91%, but I have used 74%. Dries a little bit faster, but it still works. Rubbing alcohol can be put into a spray bottle. If you want to use a spray bottle, you can do that. I would not recommend using alcohol ink in a spray bottle because this has resin in it and you don't want to be spraying that and then breathing it in. I like to put my al rubbing alcohol or my isopropyl alcohol into different types of containers when I am working on making backgrounds. I like these little tiny bottles that have the little needle in the top and then we can use that to drop our isopropyl alcohol around. I also like to have a pump style one. This is a container that actually locks at the top when you twist it, it locks, but when you open it, it's got this pump on the top and I like to have this around so when I'm, I need to clean up my desk, I can do that and it just allows me to do a couple pumps and then clean up my surface. Speaking of my surface, we definitely want to have a glass mat. You don't want to use anything like your regular cutting mat because the ink will absorb into that mat and you will not be able to get that off. So a non-porous surface like glass is a great 
working area for when you're working with your alcohol inks because you could take a rubbing alcohol and just wipe up that surface. I would recommend when you're all done to take a glass cleaner and also clean this off with a glass cleaner. I also always like to have a little container. This is like one of those little medicine cups and I have the isopropyl alcohol in here as well because sometimes I like to move my ink around with a uh, paintbrush. So I would have a paintbrush handy whenever I'm working with my alcohol inks. So I talked about moving the alcohol inks around on our non-porous surface. Using a paintbrush is one way to do it. You can also use a little hand pump. This is just a pump that when you squeeze it, it blows out air and it allows us to move our inks around on our non-porous surface. So this is a pretty handy tool to have um, when you're working with your, your alcohol inks. Another one would be to use your daubers that you have for blending your ink pads. And you just use one of these daubers, but instead of using a foam dauber, you're going to use our foam Velcro piece. You're going to use a piece of felt. So you can buy these little round felts to go onto your daubers, but you can actually use this to blend your alcohol ink by adding the drops of the alcohol onto here and then some blending solution and dabbing it onto your non-porous surface. That creates some really fun marble designs. And another thing you're gonna need is some kind of system for drying your non-porous surface. Now, I would not recommend using a embossing tool for drying your Yupo paper because it is made out of plastic, so it will melt. So I would recommend something like the Heat It or a hair dryer for drying your surfaces because they don't get quite as hot as a heat gun that you would use for melting embossing powder. This also works as a great way to move your ink around on your surface. And just a little bonus tool, I would also recommend having the alloy ink. This is the Tim Holtz alloy ink. And this is also a alcohol ink. However, it does have a um, metallic powder that's mixed into it. So you can create some really fun metallic highlights uh, using the blending solution with this as well. So we'll talk about that and we'll we'll demo this as well. We're going to play around now with making some backgrounds, but as a little bonus tip, and I learned this from Tim Holtz, he takes a little bit of water and sprays it onto the back of his Yupo paper and puts it down onto his uh, glass mat. And that actually holds our Yupo paper in place so we don't have to worry about it moving around too much. Now I do this sometimes and sometimes I forget, but it is a very helpful hint. We're going to start playing around with the Ranger inks to start with. I'm using two different colors. I like to use two different colors. However, you can use multiple colors and you can prep your surface if you'd like by adding some of the isopropyl alcohol and just putting it down on the surface before you add your alcohol inks. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a little bit of the isopropyl alcohol. I'm going to leave the top off so I don't keep messing with it. And then I'm going to add some of my colors. Now I probably will have ink all over me by the time I am done because I make a mess, but if you want to, you can wear gloves. And as you put the alcohol ink onto your surface that has the isopropyl alcohol on it, you could start to see some of that color spreading out onto your Yupo paper. So I am just going to add my two different colors. And then to move this around, I'm going to take my little hand pump here and I'm going to start moving the colors. Now, if you just give it a squirt like that, you're only going to be going in one direction. But if you want to go in multiple directions, you want to kind of spray it and move your blower at the same time. You can also add more of the isopropyl alcohol and keep blowing that around. You could also take your paintbrush, and I am going to dip this into my little cup here of the rubbing alcohol, and I'm gonna use that to kind of move my ink where I want it to go. Again, I can use my hand blower to start moving that around a little bit more. And once I have it where I want it to be, I can go ahead and use my drying gun to set this. So I'm just gonna leave it just like this. If I want to, I can add some more of my isopropyl alcohol and then use my hair dryer to move that around. All right, so that is how that turned out. And I used the Stream and Mermaid. So this is the Stream color and Mermaid colors in the Ranger alcohols. 
And the next thing I want to do is just clean up my surface. I'm going to use my piece of paper toweling here to clean up any of the alcohol ink that I got onto my glass surface. And I'm going to bring in another piece of my Upo paper. Again, this is just the, the white Upo paper. I'm going to spray the back with a little bit of water just to hold that in place. And this time I'm going to play with my Dew Drop and Cloudy Sky colors from Alt New. These are the refills for the their alcohol ink or alcohol markers. And this time I'm just going to go right onto the surface. I'm not going to add my isopropyl alcohol yet. And I'm going to add a couple drops of each of the different colors and put them so they kind of overlap each other. And I will use the blending solution this time. And we'll go ahead and start mixing these colors around. And then we'll go ahead and even play around with adding some more of the different colors. I think I want more of the, the darker color on this one. And I don't think we need to even add any more of the blending solution. The blending solution does stay um, a little wetter longer where isopropyl alcohol dries quicker. So we're just going to keep playing with this one. I like the darker color much better than the lighter color. I seem to have a tendency to go for that color more often. And there we go. I'm just going to go ahead and heat set this or just dry it up using my, my heat gun. And there we go. That came out great. I love the colors on this one. I am, my favorite colors are those teal blues and green colors. So I really love how this came out. And that was with the refills for the alcohol ink markers. So my next one, I'm going to use the transparent Yupo paper. I have never used this before, but I'm assuming it's going to work the same way. And again, I added a little squirt of water on the back just to hold this in place. And you can kind of see that pooling in the back because this is a transparent or translucent cardstock. I am going to use the isopropyl alcohol because that seems to be the one I like the best um, when playing with the different inks. And I'm going to use Ranger's Cranberry and Lettuce, kind of a Christmassy kind of look here. And I'm going to just drop in a couple of colors here. That was the cranberry, then we'll add lettuce. Add a couple more drops of the isopropyl. And then we'll use our hand tool to move these around. So we can create some really pretty Christmas style backgrounds with this. And you could do some pastel colors. And again, because Yupo paper is made out of a plastic, you want to use something that has a, a lighter temperature or a lower temperature than you would if you wouldn't want to use your embossing gun. You'd want to use a hair dryer or the heated tool, which is a low temperature. All right, there is our translucent cardstock. So let's just grab our white cardstock so we can see the difference in the two. And like I said, you can see through this one. So maybe if you wanted to add a colored, like a darker cardstock to the back, you can do that. And you'd be able to see that color through versus a white one where you can't see the color through. But I love that. That's pretty. And I really like this background. Those two colors together would be great for the holidays. So we're going to set those aside. This next one, we're going to do a transparency. Now I'm putting a piece of cardstock down just so that you'll be able to see on camera what I'm doing, but you would not want to use cardstock, regular cardstock for doing alcohol ink backgrounds because as you'll see it absorbs into the paper and it won't move around. So we are going to use two different colors for this one. We're going to use Butternut and Coral Bliss which are very pretty colors. So I'm just going to go ahead and add these colors into onto my acetate and then I will go ahead and add some isopropyl alcohol to that. Now one thing you can do is the reason why I like using the bottle that has the metal tip is because I can use this 
as a way to push some of that color around on my cart on my my base before I even start using my hand tool or my dryer to move it around. So as you can see, it moves a lot different on to the acetate because it is a much slicker surface than the Yupo paper. But as you can see, my cardstock is just absorbing that that ink. So it's not going to move around on there. Now I'm going to leave this just the way it is. I'm just going to go ahead and heat set it or dry it up with my heat gun. And you'll probably be able to see because I used a lot of the isopropyl alcohol, you'll be able to move the ink around a little bit more as you're drying. So you can see I'm moving the ink a little bit more while I'm drying my acetate. Again, I used a heat resistant acetate just so I don't have to worry about it warping or anything like that. And I'm gonna bring in a nice fresh piece of white cardstock so you can see what that looks like. And I love this. It creates a beautiful marble effect on the acetate. Isn't that gorgeous? And I love those two colors together. I thought the uh, coral color was gonna kind of start overtaking, but because I kind of heat set this and stopped it before it went any further, it pulled in a lot of that yellow and made it more into an orange kind of color. Love that, came out gorgeous. So now we're gonna go ahead and test out some acetate. I'm gonna use both Ranger and alcohol ink marker refills on this one. So we have a combination of Ranger and refills. And I'm gonna go ahead and just put a bunch of the color down. Now we didn't put any of the isopropyl alcohol on here yet because I knew that when I was hitting the paper, you could see it kind of started to curl up. So because I'm working on a piece of cardstock and not able to move my, or put some spray on the back of my piece of acetate, my paper is curling up. So I am going to kind of hold it in place while I work on moving these colors around. So you can see on the acetate, it works just the same as it does on the UPO paper. Um, keep in mind that sometimes when you're combining some colors, you might end up with a uh, kind of a muddy look and you don't want that to happen. So I'm going to come in and throw in some more of this pink sherbet and add some more of that around onto my, my card here, or my acetate. And then I'm going to add a little bit more of the isopropyl alcohol because I want to add more, more of that pink color to this design. So I'm just going to go ahead and dry this and leave it the way it is. I added a new, a fresh piece of cardstock behind my vellum so you can see what it looks like. But don't you just love that marbling? It's so different when you see it go from a piece of white Yupo paper to the vellum. The colors are just so much different. And I love the, the muteness and, and pastel look. So I like to use lighter colors when I'm using the vellum, but you can use darker colors as well. Since I used alloy as a bonus tool for doing alcohol ink backgrounds, I thought I would give you a bonus background. So this is one that was done with the refills for the alcohol ink markers. And you can hear inside of here, there's a ball to mix up that metallic uh, powder that's inside of here. So I am going to go ahead and give this a good shake. And then we're gonna create a background with this. I'm gonna use my isopropyl alcohol to move it around on my on my background here. So I'm gonna add a couple of drops or a nice big splash if you want. So I'm just gonna give a nice splash to this, add my isopropyl alcohol, because we can use this just as we did with our, our with our alcohol inks. And you can see with the gold, it has a different reaction. I'm gonna use my, my hair blower here, or my little hand dryer here, as I blow it all around the room. Um, and give this a nice, good spraying of the color. We can keep adding some of the isopropyl alcohol to kind of move this around a little bit more. We can end up getting some really pretty patterns with this. And I think I'm going to leave it just like this, and we're going to go ahead and heat set it. And I love that little bit of splatter on the side here, which did go all the way off my desk here. And I love that gold, just adding it to the background. When we added the isopropyl alcohol, we even moved out some more of that alcohol ink, which changed the color of it a little bit more. It made it more muted. Now I do have gold all over my desk here and it will come off. I'm just using 
my little pump bottle of my rubbing alcohol and you got to use a little bit of elbow grease to get it off there but we were able to get that all cleaned up like i said i would go through with a, a glass cleaner at the very end just to make sure we got everything off our desk so here's just a quick review this one was the very first one we did on some regular upo paper using the two ranger alcohol inks and I really love those colors together. It almost made its own kind of color. We also blended this with uh, our hand pump as well as our paintbrush. This was our second one we did also on the UPIP paper that we turned into a bonus project by adding the gold alloy onto it. Love that gold alloy. And I got that all over the place. It even went onto my vellum sheet, but look at, I don't know if you can see the gold that splattered on here, but you can make use this also as a background um, to create some splatters on it as well. That alloy would definitely work in so many different ways. This is our vellum piece that we created that beautiful pastel marble effect on it. We also have our acetate where we created this gorgeous acetate piece that has the orangish colors that we did with the yellow and the coral color. Love this. And this would make a fun um, window on a card or something like that. And then our last one here would be our transparent Gupo paper that we made into a pretty kind of Christmas color design. All of these would be so much fun to die cut with different types of dies and even, you know, cut on your Cricut machine if you have one of those. But you can do so many different backgrounds and it's just fun when you want to just sit down and create, but you're not sure what you want to do. You can kind of create yourself a whole little collection of backgrounds that you can use for different cards when you're just sitting down to create. I'm gonna have some cards that I made using different types of alcohol ink backgrounds over on my blog that coordinates with this video if you wanna go and check it out. Thanks for stopping by and hope you enjoyed today's video and found it helpful. Here are two more videos that you might enjoy.